These coins are quality, but I want something undervalued too. The coin I'm thinking of that I like, which I'm updating you on today, is polka dot. The polka dot of the past is quality, but the polka dot of the future is exceptional. Here is exactly why polka dot is going to shock the cryptocurrency markets in 2024. It could be the biggest sleeping giant in the top 20. Polka dot also kind of overlooked by many, but if you look at development, it's insane right now. This is crazy in terms of development. They're way, way, way. There's so much. So it's off the chart compared to, say, Nier, Ethereum, Solana, even Avalanche. And you can think of, you know, even within that, you've got, you know, interoperable systems, stuff like whether it's Polkadot. Wow. What's that saying by Jim Rogers, the legendary commodity investor? I want to invest where there's a lot of activity going on under the hood and where no one is looking. Polka dot, man. A couple weeks ago, I did a video uh, related, entitled Songbird versus Kusama because both these projects we're talking about today, Flare and Polka dot, have canary networks and both are focused on interoperability. I'm doing this project and I'm, I'm reading about Kusama, and I'm learning more and more about Polkadot as I do it. And I'm just like, why do I not have way more invested in Polkadot than some of the other projects on this channel that I never talk about? You don't even know what these tokens are. But I did a big portfolio rebalancing and moved a lot of that into both Polkadot and Avalanche. Not that you should do that because I did. Absolutely not. That could get you wrecked. But... I'm concentrating my bets much more these days, and those two are much higher on my list. Today, we're going to do a comparison between Flare Networks and Polkadot. Polkadot, obviously, many of you, if you're coming in from a Polkadot search keyword or something here, obviously, you know you are in a legendary project. We're going to talk about that. Flare Networks, a newer up-and-comer, solving problems with interoperability in a way that no one else is. So that's why I believe these two projects do deserve a comparison. Not only that, but we're going to look at the tokens, too, at the end and see which one could go higher, in, in my opinion. Now, nothing here is investment advice at all. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an investment advisor, as you saw at the beginning of this video. So in this video, we're going to talk about both projects in terms of the team. We're going to look at the tech in terms of interoperability. We're going to look at the marketing. We're going to look at the network effect and the narratives going around on each project. And then we are going to look at price predictions, not financial advice. That is all just entertainment and fun, just like this entire video. So let's get into it, everybody. First, let's talk about funding and founders. All right, first funding for Polkadot. Polkadot has received so far $345 million in funding. Pretty crazy stuff. That's a very large amount. And they're doing a lot of good stuff with it, obviously. Now, let's talk about the founder because I would say this person is almost, in terms of legend status, somewhere between, I would put uh, the whatever Satoshi Nakamoto is and uh, Vitalik Buterin. So... Let's talk about Gavin Wood. He founded Polkadot in 2016. He has a PhD in human computer interfacing from the University of York, which is a top UK university. He co-founded Ethereum in 2013. More interesting, he invented the Solidity programming language. Uh, he authored the Ethereum yellow paper. He coded the first functional version of Ethereum. He played an instrumental role in the creation of Substrate. If you don't know what Substrate is, it's basically a blockchain SDK that many blockchains you and I heard of were built with. Uh, substrate was also used to build Polkadot. In so many chains we've heard of, they all use Substrate. Many do. Many don't. Some don't, but Substrate's huge in that space. So, <clears throat> I mean, Solidity, come on. We all, many of us have to use that. Now, some of us would rather there would have been a more Pythonic type of programming language created, but certain types of software development require much more granular interaction with hardware, and you just can't do that with Python. So now let's talk about Flare. So far, we have Flare clocking it at $11 million in funding. Uh, we have three founders on here. Hugo Fillion has a master's of science in machine learning at UCL, it's University College London. He also has a Bachelor's of Science in Financial Risk Management 
at Cass Business School. I believe they changed their name. I forgot what it's called now. Sean Rowan has a Master's of Science in Machine Learning at UCL also, and a Bachelor's of Engineering from Trinity College. And then Dr. Nairi Usher has a PhD in Quantum Computing from the University College London. Now, let's get into the tech from, a, from the level, from the standpoint of interoperability. Very cool stuff going on both these. I like to make these slides that are pretty bad. They torture people. Let's get into this. First, let's look at Polkadot. Keep in mind, Polkadot V2 is coming out, so I put some new words on here like Accords, which are I believe are coming with it. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, Polkadot people. Uh, but basically, Polkadot is considered a layer zero. What a layer zero is is basically you as a startup, as a dap company or even as an individual coming soon an individual individual developer coming soon will be able to go on and afford to be able to just roll your own blockchain your own parachain in this case on Polkadot, and it has a a central relay chain which handles things like concert security things like that all the important stuff now when the when you roll your own parachain on Polkadot. You can build your dApps on top of it, just like you would any other blockchain. And then ultimately these dApps and hopefully add value to end users who are making lots of money using your dApps, or maybe you're solving a problem with identity, or maybe you're a gaming company and you're selling these end users, selling these end users, NFTs, whatever. They're happy. They're giving you money. They're making money. And this is leading to activity within the uh, Polkadot ecosystem on a pair chain, which also leads to activity on the relay chain. Now, with XCM, which is this cross-chain messaging protocol on Polkadot, these parachains can communicate with each other, which is very cool. And now, coming soon, uh, Gavin talks about Accords, which is almost like turning this cross-chain messaging protocol into a treaty of sorts. Let's think of some, some Accords that might make sense. One of them would be an asset hub, right? At the moment, if two chains want to have asset interactions, they kind of have to go through a third chain. They have to go through this asset hub chain. Now, if one of them is the native, asset, native chain for the asset, it's a little bit different. But in principle, if, if, two unrelated chains want, uh, if two chains that are unrelated do want to deal in a third asset, you kind of have to have this additional, um, additional path. Well, Accords remove all of that. Essentially, you can think of it as almost like an embassy, something that exists within the general process space. It's scheduled on the same core at the same time as the parachain, but it's not part of the parachain's business logic. It's an extra thing. Kind of like embassies have their own law that is in line with the country um, that they are the em embassy of, yet they sit physically um, in, the, uh, in, in, in the local country. Um, so it's similar with accords. It's kind of like business logic that is, in principle, foreign, but agreed upon, and it exists locally. You can also imagine a multicast XCM router, the ability to send a single message, but for it to go across into multiple chains. Maybe um, in, a, in an ordered fashion. So do this operation here, and then carry on and do that operation there, but still with my permission, still with my uh, privilege. We can imagine things like a, a, a decentralized exchange that has outposts across many different chains. So the exchange can be used locally without having to have a, a bi-directional um, uh, channel open. Very cool, right? So you have, your, you have this layer zero called Polkadot where you can roll your own blockchain called a parachain. This parachain not only can have multiple dApps on it and serve users, it can also uh, interact with other parachains based at the consensus level. You have the ability to also interact with, with external blockchains to this ecosystem. And you have this Accords thing coming. Now in Polkadot version two, this is going to be elastic computational resource, meaning if you want to start rolling stuff up as a, maybe a small time developer or you're a giant corporation, but you're not using this consistently, this is like elastic cloud compute in a way on AWS. You're only, you're only charged for what you're using, thereby making it much more affordable for both companies and individual developers to go ahead and roll dApps, you know? You might wanna roll a blockchain. There's just all kinds of reasons you might wanna roll your own chain. 
too many to think of right now. But if you look at the Polkadot ecosystem, you'll see some pretty cool projects on there, including the biggest one I can think of, which is Moonbeam. There's Kilt. There's a bunch of other ones. I'll link to this doc by Cointelegraph in the description as well, so you can see what's coming up in V2. But very cool stuff with the uh, how interoperability works on the Polkadot ecosystem. Now, let's talk about interoperability on Flare Networks, because this is very cool. No one else is doing this. If you can make it through this bad slide, you'll see what's going on here. Now, Flare Networks is not a layer zero, it's a layer one. Flare's thing is, you know what? This can all be done on a single blockchain. You can build here and have all that interoperability happening. So let's start from scratch. Flare is a fork. You can see this in the developer docs. Flare started as a fork of the Avalanche blockchain, which is a badass blockchain in and of itself. You Polkadot people probably know a lot about Avalanche. You're probably, some of you uh, investors are probably invested in both. I know I am now. And so Flare forked off this thing and then they built their own things that are not available on Avalanche. You know, the, some people kind of said, well, Avalanche is a layer zero. You can build subnets. Why didn't Flare just create a subnet there? Well, we're going to talk about that right now because Flare is doing things on their fork of Avalanche that you probably couldn't do with, with as a subnet. And those things are the Flare Time Series Oracle, the State Connector, and Layer, layer Cake. So first, let's talk about the Flare Time Series Oracle. It is composed of a list of many data providers. Somewhere getting close to 100 and it's going to supposed to go up to a thousand, I believe, in 2024. Now, these data providers are pulling data from Web2 and Web3 sources and algorithm checks to find the accuracy of the data. And whoever has the most accurate reward, uh, accurate data is rewarded. And we uh, Flare holders can delegate to these data providers and earn rewards ex and help give these data providers vote power as well. So you have an Oracle that is decentralized through data providers, pulling data into the Flare, into the Flare Layer 1 blockchain. DApps can build on top of this blockchain to use that decentralized data provided by the Flare Time Series Oracle from the data providers. Very cool stuff. So we have Oracle functionality right there. Now, we also have the ability for Flare to read the state of other blockchains with the state connector. Now the state connector can go ahead and say, oh wow, yes, value did actually transfer on the Algorand blockchain or value did transfer from one account to another on the XRP ledger. So based on the truthiness of that transfer, which is determined by a decentralized group of what's known as attestation providers, my app can now take an action. We saw, for those of you in the Flare community, and you can look up this video if you want, if you're in the Polkadot community, we saw a proof of concept video happening where someone bought an NFT on Flare Networks with a transfer of value on the XRP ledger. So, very cool. Looks like interoperability to me so far. Now, take that a step further, and you can go ahead and use Layer Cake, which is an insured throttled bridging mechanism to transfer assets from one chain to another. So a big feature rolling out on Flare this year is F Assets, which is the ability to wrap your non-smart contract tokens, such as if you're a Doge holder, put them to work in DeFi protocols built on Flare, and then through Layer Cake, which is insured bridging, that's right, decentralized insured bridging, you heard that right, if something goes wrong here and this is attacked, you will get your money back through this insurance mechanism. At least that's what, that's my understanding of it, that's what they're saying, and if you look at the docs, it all looks pretty crystal clear. So, correct me if I'm wrong on any of that. Basically, you can take your F asset and put it on an app, bridge it over to something that might only be on the, an app that might only be talking to the Ethereum network. So, pretty cool. That all looks like interoperability to me, all happening here on a layer one. So you have, you have this layer zero with Polkadot, and I do see some use cases where it's like, you know what, I really want to roll my own chain, versus, you know, can I do it all on this layer one? And it might be just a simple, it might be just easier for a startup to roll something on a blockchain, especially if they're familiar maybe with Avalanche. It's a fork, so you, you're going to have some of those same features with the P chain and the C chain, et cetera, et cetera. Stuff to think about. Very cool for both on the interoperability. Now, let's look at marketing 
Some of you are not going to like this when it comes to what Polkadot's doing and others. I personally think it's pretty cool. And it's also a reason why I think we're going to see Polkadot probably, I think in the next few months, we'll probably see Polkadot kind of get some traction going. Because when you look at the charts and you see Polkadot here still at seven, right in between 7 and $8 when its all-time high was 50 and we're going to look at some other stuff here that lines up with that Jim Rogers quote I said at the beginning of the video about, you know, a lot of things going on and not many people paying attention at, at the moment. So let's talk marketing. Now, marketing strategy for Polkadot is interesting. Not only do they have a huge, strong community and a very strong brand and are well known, well known in the cryptocurrency community, the broad cryptocurrency community, but they allow their token holders, their Polkadot token holders, the, the, the general community, to vote on marketing proposals that influencers provide. So imagine, you know, you just got, you go to a proposal and you're like, you go to a, a, a blockchain's uh, proposal, proposal area, whether it's a dashboard in a software app or a GitHub repo, like you see on some other chains. And in, within Polkadot's, it's called OpenGov, I believe. Um, yeah, OpenGov referendum. And you can see treasury proposals. And so influencers go in here, big influencers who like Polkadot and respect the chain, and they propose to create content for, for a treasury grant. And here we can see one by Altcoin Daily, which, which was awarded on December 23rd. And we just saw that the first altcoin daily video for this reward drop a couple days ago. In fact, I quoted, I actually put a snippet of it in the beginning of this video. So that's the same video. Um, when you look at these, it's amazing because you look at what altcoin daily is asking. They're saying, Hey, we want basically $110,000 for a series of videos, which would be, I think it's what 2,100 dot and altcoin daily is, you know, Hats off to them. They deserve it. You try and build up over a million uh, YouTube followers. It's going to take you a long time and it's not easy and it's a lot of work. Making one video is a lot of work. So when you're in the game and you've got that sort of attention, uh, right, yeah, right over here, 1.4 million followers, you do get to um, sort of name your, well, within reason, you get to name a high price because cryptocurrency is niche. Uh, it takes a lot of knowledge just to learn about one blockchain. They can, you know, ask these types of prices and get it. This was approved. But what's funny is this is not something Polkadot's doing by themselves. The community with their with their vote power is saying yes or no. And you'll see some influencers we've all heard of rejected in here as well. You'll be like, oh, you got you got you got thumbs down, buddy. And then you'll see other ones where you're like, oh wow you're talking about this and your it's is going to do really well. You'll see some influencers in here by where legendary investors are going to be talking about Polkadot coming up in the next month, two months, three months. And so, and these are respected investors who would not talk about this if they did not believe in the project. So very cool way to, to market. Now, Flair does not take this approach. I believe, I don't know what they're, exact approaches yet. I've seen them opening up channels to influencers. So influencers come and get updates and things like that. Very cool. No real incentivization there uh, outside of, well, what everyone gets who participates in the Flare community. And that is basically uh, wrapping and delegating your Flare token. So me as an influencer, I'm going to get the same amount. I wouldn't call me, I'm still new, so I can't really label myself an influencer yet. But me as a YouTube content, can, YouTube content creator, up and coming, if you will, I'm not getting any more rewards than, for example, anyone who's just rapping and delegating. And so, and there is a good reason for that approach. One reason you might not want to uh, go with the um, community voting on influencer marketing, paid influencer marketing is, well, will influencers dump these tokens on the market? And it's reasonable to think that some will. And at times, some won't. I'd tell you what, right now, if I was an altcoin daily spot and I was receiving 2100 DOT, I might dump 1,000 of them and quick keep 20,000 of them because that $110,000 is probably going to turn into a million dollars sometime in the next two years. Then I would sell. I mean... But other times, you know, these video channels like this, they're not just some guy like me sitting around um, in my office making videos. They have a team. 
You know, you need a team to do that much research. So you have to pay some salaries, things like that. So will some dot get, go onto the market and be sold as a result of this? Yes. Uh, I think what Flair is saying is we're not up into this. I, and I could be wrong. I'm not, I don't have quotes by Hugo or anyone. But I think the idea with Flair is they probably don't want influencers dumping on the market uh, because it's a lower market cap. So it will have a bigger effect on price as well. Whereas here, higher market cap, the price not be, might not be as affected with a um, $110,000 worth of dot being dumped, which that's not that much if you think about it. So anyway, very cool. I like, I like dot's marketing approach. I know some people might not approve it. I think it's great. I have no problem with it whatsoever. I wish I was bigger. I'd, I'd probably be like, I'd, I'd be in there going, hey, I'll make a video for you. But you know what? I'll make a video for free talking about both these projects because they're awesome. They're building really cool stuff. And as an investor, I believe I'm going to do really well. So that, very cool with that. Now, Flair, like I said, doing it naturally and it is happening. Things do happen. Like we just saw a great article yesterday. Uh, Google Cloud joins Flair Network as a validator. Flair jumps 5%. Now, that was at the time of this thing. Flare was up, I believe, close to 40% yesterday. It had a nice green candle pump because of this. Now, was this organic marketing or not? Who knows? Maybe they uh, talked to each other. Good if they did. That's what I like to see. Outreach by marketing teams in the, in the Flare community. Letting you know, uh, Coindesk know, hey, this is probably pretty big news. You might want to look at this. So love that as well. And I do see Flair's marketing pumping up. Okay, now let's look at some network effect and narrative stuff. Network effect and narratives. Some of my favorite stuff right there that I like to analyze when I'm looking at a project. One of my favorites is developer activity. Now, you can't, these two you really can't compare. Flair is newer, so it's probably going to be mostly a small subset of developers, probably the uh, Flare Labs, and then a few open source people kicking in, and some other people in the uh, and some other people in the Flare um, ecosystem also contributing here and there. So it's going to be smaller, of course, with a newer project. But with Polkadot, even when you compare Polkadot against the other giants, I think Polkadot is probably hands down has the biggest developer activity in the entire cryptocurrency space. We're talking over Bitcoin. We're talking over Ethereum. You look at the charts, you look at like Santiment, or you look at, you just go to developer report and you can see, I mean, 15 million commits, uh, 1,800 monthly active devs, 621 full-time devs. And you look at these charts and you start to compare them against other big projects like Avalanche or Solana, Ethereum, Bitcoin, you're like, wow, yeah, that Polkadot is beating everyone in developer activity. It's pretty crazy. Price of $7. And over the last few years during the bear market, we've had the most developer activity ever on any blockchain, it looks like. I mean, I, you, if, you, if I'm wrong, correct me. But when I compared the ones I compared, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, Polkadot has the most. So just tearing this up. Now, Flare, they're not even on developer report here. I think someone from the Flare community needs to go and add Flare, uh, Flare's Git repos to a repo in, in here so it can be tracked. But you can see Flare on Santimit. And there are periods where over the last, since it's new, December 21, uh, like it's probably, I think this is right here in the 22. It was around the um, Songbird era, which is Flare's Kusama. Uh, it did have some nice spikes, but you're, you know, you're looking at, if you look at this number over here in the corner, which I can't touch it, but you can see we had a nice spike up there where there was a moment where there, there were the activity, the number of developer events on Santa Mint were 298 and the number at a time where the number of developer events on dot were 1,872. But it's nice to see Flare catch up there, but yeah, then it kind of goes back down, of course, and you're talking about you know, 3,800 developer activity events on DOT versus 58 on Flare. So it's a new project, probably not a fair comparison. This is where you're talking David and Goliath at this point. Now, let's talk about it. Look at another metric, though, which I was really impressed with Flare, and that is monthly active users. 
Now with Polkadot, you can get monthly active users through their explorers and things like that. I had to sort of do a little digging around and open up my, since I launched a Flare Rich List, I had to kind of make some assumptions about what monthly activity could be. For those of you who don't know, if you're in a Polkadot, it's just kind of like a frequency distribution grouped by wallet. So for example, if you have uh, 10 million plus 50 million wrap Flare, there are 136 of you, uh, the percentage of that wallet is <clears throat> very small and you'd be considered a shark. Now, what I did is I opened up my Django ORM for you nerds. This is Web2. Django is so outdated, Web2. Still a great framework, though. You can do a lot with this. Why can't we build blockchains in Django, people? What I did was I opened up my ORM. I took the total accounts at the time of the last Flare Rich List, minus the total accounts that have a zero balance, meaning they didn't wrap any Flare, and that left me with 86, 86 thousand accounts that are wrapping and so it's safe to say i, I it, to me it's safe to say that most of those people those eighty six thousand who are wrapping their flare are also delegating it who would wrap flare and just have it sit in a wallet and do nothing some people might actually so it's probably smaller because to claim those rewards those flare drops i should say you don't even have to delegate but that still for a new project and flare launched early in 2023 Songbird earlier, um, that's pretty good head start when you're comparing that against Polkadot's 295,000 uh, active users. So I'm going to give a thumbs up to Flair on that one for uh, network effect for a brand new blockchain in a coming into the space when getting attention is not as easy as it was in 2016 and 2017. So good one there. Now let's look at enterprise adoption. Polkadot just tearing it up here. One of my favorite ones is a partnership with uh, Un the Unity game engine. So now uh, game developers who use Unity are going to see a Polkadot option for Web3 in the IDE, basically, where they can sort of think, oh, wow, hey, maybe I could uh, use this for NFTs. The sky's the limit there. Uh, Polkadot is it's going to be a contender in gaming. I think Avalanche is like everyone's favorite right now. Polkadot seems to be crushing it. I'm, I'm definitely betting they're going to continue to do well in gaming. There was also a partnership last year with Kilt, which is another um, project built on a Polkadot parachain in the Polkadot ecosystem, I should say. And Kilt, and Kilt does a decentralized identities something that is going to be the biggest thing in the world in the future. It's going to protect us from AI clones of us, among lots of other things. You know, when your ID is on a blockchain, we saw Larry uh, Fink from BlackRock talking about this the other day. You have your ID on a blockchain. You have tokenized assets on a blockchain from real estate to stock markets, etc. Your ID on the blockchain owns these assets. You can swap them instantly. It's going to be a different world and pretty, you know, pretty quick amount of time and we're talking a few years it's crazy you have that in ai it's just insane how quickly the world's changing so very cool partnerships there i showed earlier uh flare networks just had a partnership with google cloud very cool partnership there because google cloud is going to be a data provider providing data into the Flare time series Oracle. Now, imagine the data that um, Google Cloud is going to be able to provide into this thing. So, you know, one use case that I've seen buzzing on crypto Twitter for Flare is to be a data provider for training AI models. Can you imagine that? And you're getting data from Google Cloud, checking the veracity of it, and then using it to train AI models. Man, that sounds pretty cool to me. So many use cases on both these chains blows my mind just to think about it. Okay, what are the takeaways and what are some price predictions? All right, first, obviously, Polkadot is a legend. They're Goliath. They deserve to be. They're one of the tops, and I think they're going to stay there. You have uh, Dr. Gavin Wood, an amazing guy. He's had so much influence in the crypto community space. All, everything outside of Bitcoin, basically, including the Solidity programming language and Substrate. So much going on there. Uh, let's look at it from a narrative perspective. I'm going to say they are rocking the narrative really well. What I like about Polkadot is their narrative and their value proposition is crystal clear. There's no murkiness. What's Polkadot about? Interoperability. You, we're the supercomputer of interoperability. It's a very clear value proposition. It's a big undertaking, but it's super, super clear. 
They're crushing it on developer activity and they have very cool transparent marketing strategies in addition to their, to their epic community, passionate community, which is very, very big and crosses among other blockchains. So you'll have Avalanche people probably going, yeah, Polkadot's pretty cool. And you have Cosmos people going, yeah, Polkadot's legit. And you'll have, you know, so you, you get that kind of, you know, even Ethereum people as well. Yeah, Polkadot's all right. I think even the Cardano, uh, what's his name? Hoskinson's wants to do something with Polkadot. So you have that sort of cross-chain respect. Very cool. It's needed. It's like this is going to be a collaborative world, people. Now, let's talk about Flare. Flare is catching up fast. They're brand new in, in crypto. Well, I mean, they're not even brand new anymore. They've been out, launched last year. They are forming partnerships. They got the Google Cloud data provider thing that just happened. A lot of stuff happened uh, last year. And on their roadmap, they have some pretty cool stuff coming up too. You can see uh, they're going in 2024. They're slated to scale up to 1,000 data providers for the Oracle, the Time Series Oracle. Uh, the Flare Data Connector, which incorporates the State Connector and the Web Connector, that's going to be very cool because that is going to be basically the ability to pull Web 2 data. That's not just price data. I think the sky's the limit when we could pull all types of data. Imagine being able to pull data like, oh, someone just deceased, and now I want to trigger an event because of that happening on a blockchain that belongs to a digital ID and where we can transfer assets. Think about the possibilities that are coming to all these projects soon. Uh, um, 2024, the F asset system is already in private beta. That's going to go up on Songbird next, which is the Kusama of the Flare Networks area right now strangely songbird is a couple x multiples under the price of flare which makes no sense to me you polka dot people are like probably like yeah what, what's up with that that's because kusama has been at least 4x above polka dot the entire time much higher at other times like when parachain testing au auction testing was happening so I'm looking for a big lift off some this sometime this year in Songbird. Will it stay there? I don't know. It stayed there for Polkadot. I believe it would stay there for Songbird as well. Uh, layer cake opens up, and now we can start um, transferring and adding value to um, all other smart contract systems. So we're talking about interoperability there. So very cool with Flare. You know, it's like... You have this newer chain, you have this Goliath legend, both are great. I own both. I think I said that at the beginning of this video. If not, I'll say it again. I own both these. I own Polkadot and I own Flare. Um, very great. Very, um, very happy to own both. Now, price predictions. What do I think is going to happen? I think when you look at, um, let's go to this website. Oh, it looks like the crypto market's having a little pump. Good. We need that. Um, Look at Polkadot here. And so this has a market cap right now of eight, of nine, what does that say? I'm in glasses, 9.7 billion. Uh, you look at the all time high of this thing, it was oh, just hit touched, oh, just over $50. And this thing has not had a recent pump like Solana did, where Solana's already done a 10X. Some of the AI tokens like Fetch have already done a 10X. So. We haven't had this in Polkadot yet, yet we see a media blitz coming, which is transparent thanks to Polkadot making this a community-driven proposal endeavor. And you can see it. So you know a media blitz is coming. I've seen other people in these proposals like Raul Paul and Real Vision. We're going to hear about Polkadot from them more. And, well, we saw Raul Paul talking about Solana for a while before it just, what, 10 x recently? So Solana's pretty, it's getting up there. It's, it's I don't know, it's definitely had a bigger move than Polkadot off its lows. I think Pol Polkadot's pr close to 4 x maybe 3.5. Solana's 10 x already from its lows. So this tells me there's a good amount of room here. Could we do a 2x past this this uh this all-time high right here of $50, could we go to 100 bucks? It's possible. I don't know if I'm going to play and hold it that long. I might be a little more conservative and start exiting out when we get closer to these all-time highs, maybe closer to 50, 60, 70, maybe between 50 and 70. I don't know. I have a feeling I'll probably have to fight my emotions and I'll get greedy and fear that I'm going to FOMO and miss out on these epic gains. And I'm going to have to fight that. The network effect is growing here. And when you get a really strong network effect, you know, these crashes are a lot less too. You get a lot more capital in the space, partnerships, 
And this thing might not crash nearly as much. And there are lots of ways to earn simple crypto passive income. So maybe some for staking as well, because this could be a good simple crypto passive income opportunity after the price blows up. And that's, you know, if you watch this channel, you know, I love simple crypto passive income. So let's take a look at Flare. Flare is, is newer from February, back in February 2023. This thing launched at four cents. I mean, this looks pretty good, right? Because we only have to get to four cents, over four cents to get into all time highs. For those of you old schoolers who are around for the original airdrop, you might be counting the IOU. I'm not counting the IOU. Uh, the founders of Flair said not to count the IOU. What I'm counting is this was the all-time high when it was dropped during a bear market of 4.5 cents. And now we're already coming up after that announcement yesterday. We're still holding in around um, two, uh, two cents. So now, can this 10x to 20 cents from here in 2024? I don't think it's impossible. But I'm talking about this entire bull run. Can this do more than 10x? Whereas I don't know if Polkadot can do more than a 10x, 12x, 15x, possibly. Polkadot might surprise us all. Polkadot might do a 20 or 30x. You just don't know. And I'm not going to pretend I know. But I feel like with this lower market cap of only uh, 678 million versus what we just saw with Polkadot's market cap, think that this one has room to go up quite a few more multiples, but I'm glad I own both. Flare could return a higher multiple based on the lower market cap. If they get that attention, if they get that interoperability on a single chain buzz going, it could be huge, especially if the tech gets released on schedule to support that. You get all these features rolled out in late 2024. That's what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months after the Bitcoin halving? And all coins are now starting to blow up because maybe Bitcoin's starting to slow down. You have that interoperability narrative rocking and rolling all on a single layer one blockchain. So it's going to be fun to see that play out as well. In any case, I'm glad I own both. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.